Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank the task force for inviting me and for the important work that um, motivates this particular session. Uh, my name is Darnell Hunt, and I have studied the status of Black Americans in the Hollywood entertainment industry for nearly 30 years. I'm currently Dean of Social Sciences at UCLA and Professor of Sociology and African American Studies. Since 2014, I've been the lead author on a series of annual UCLA reports documenting the progress of people of color and women in front of and behind the camera in the Hollywood industry. Before this, I authored a series of reports for the Writers Guild of America West on diversity among Hollywood writers, a study on the state of African-American inclusion in primetime television for the Screen Actors Guild, and I helped staff Hollywood interviews for testimony before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights 1993 Los Angeles hearings in the aftermath of the 1992 uprisings. So I'm here today to testify about the significant impact that black exclusion from and underemployment in the Hollywood industry has had on the group's position in America. First, it's important to consider that the Hollywood industry was born in the early years of the 20th century during the height of the Jim Crow era, itself a backlash against reconstruction and unfinished efforts to address the damages suffered by black Americans during centuries of American slavery. A product of that moment, the Hollywood industry was structured by the same doctrine of white supremacy that organized life throughout American society. Though recent years have seen some advances for black talent in the industry, mostly on screen, white males remain firmly in control, calling the shots behind the scenes. But why does this, any of this matter in the overall scheme of things, given the very real challenges that the legacy of American slavery continues to pose for Black Americans in terms of economic, political, and social justice, why should we care about how the group has been treated by Hollywood? Well, the answer is simple. While the films and television shows Hollywood produces are entertaining, they are much more than mere entertainment. It is no accident that one of the earliest campaigns of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Persons, NAACP, centered around protesting the highly popular and racist 1915 film, Birth of a Nation. The NAACP recognized the power of media, of the stereotypical and dehumanizing images of blackness promoted in the film to undermine its efforts to integrate black Americans into a Jim Crow era nation clinging to the doctrine of white supremacy. Now, though the smoking gun of causation is often difficult to locate, when it comes to the impact of media on society, there is ample evidence supporting the idea that heavy media consumption has a normalizing or mainstreaming effect, pushing consumers' understandings of the world in directions popularized in the films and television shows they consume. This effect appears to be strongest when media serve as a stand-in for real face-to-face -face encounters with others and or in-person experiences with the issues that are being depicted in the media. Indeed, concerns about this media effect motivated the advocacy group Color of Change, commissioned a 2017 study I authored exploring the role that race plays in the writer's room, the creative spaces responsible for producing the scripts that animate Hollywood's television shows. Among the more important takeaways from the study was the finding that black voices were largely absent from these spaces for a long-standing and staple genre of network television, the crime procedural. Accordingly, crime procedurals were found to routinely glamorize policing and to legitimize the criminal justice system while downplaying the degree to which Black Americans are racially profiled and victimized by both. Now, this finding is particularly alarming given what we know about the normalizing effects of media, about the potential for media in this case condition police officers, prosecutors, juries, judges, and or vigilantes to perceive black bodies as a threat and to police violence against them as justified. According to the U.S. Census, black Americans alone constituted about 12.4% of the population in 2020. And this was the last year examined in our most recent UCLA Hollywood diversity report. But among the mostly men empowered to make decisions about which films and television shows will be greenlighted for production, who will produce or direct them, and how large, their, how large their budgets will be, Black Americans were largely absent. Indeed, there were no Black CEOs or members of the senior management team at the major Hollywood studios in early 2020, 
and only 3.9% of major studio uh, unit heads were black, like casting, marketing, etc. The numbers were better for blacks at the television networks, but still well below proportionate representation. Here, 6.8% of network CEOs, 2.9% of senior management team members, and 7.5% of unit heads were black in 2020. It should be noted that Hollywood did not welcome its first black um, head of a major television network until 2016, when Channing Dungey was promoted to president of ABC Entertainment. But Dungey soon left ABC for a VP level position at Netflix. Among television show creators, the creatives who develop and pitch ideas for new TV series to the networks and studios, Blacks were just 4.5% of the total in broadcast and 7.4% in digital during the 2019-20 season. In short, the cost of marginalizing Black talent among those who call the shots in Hollywood is exceedingly high. Not only are Black managers and creatives deprived of lucrative employment opportunities, but the decisions of the white men who dominate the industry result in films and television shows that often fail to affirm the realities of black life in America. Given what we know about the power of media to influence how we think about who we are, who we are not, and who we hope to be, this is a legacy of white supremacy that must be rectified. Thank you.